Dr. Cooper, I think, is one of the most influential human beings in our world today. Everything that he does, both scientifically and the way he practices, is to improve the quality of individuals. You can tell he just loves coming to work and what he does. Uh, he loves motivating people. I don't know of anyone who is more passionate about their profession than Dr. Cooper. On our campus, we have a statue of Jesus, and he's washing the feet of Peter. Our mission here at Dallas Baptist University is to produce servant leaders, and I know of no one better than Dr. Ken Cooper for us to hold up as an example to our students of what it means to be a servant leader. If I had a son, which I don't, but if I did, uh, he's the type of person that I'd want my son to grow up and be like. Uh, I think he's just a great example for people of all ages. Without a doubt, Ken Cooper is the most outstanding man I've ever known. Has a lot of integrity, very brilliant. He is a visionary. He's got big ideas in medicine. He got the whole world exercising and the whole world beginning to think about the relationship of eating right and exercising. He literally is the father of preventive medicine and the day will come when he will receive a Nobel Prize. My father grew up in Oklahoma and, and was an athlete. He did actually play football in high school uh, and then went on to focus on running and basketball and then actually in college ran track and cross country and so had a lot of success with that and so that was kind of his foundation of where the importance of exercise came from. Went on to medical school but it was in the military where he was allowed some freedom to really focus his research that he grew and blossomed. That the military was a tremendous point of turning his focus and efforts towards exercise and medicine. He was the first to truly quantify fitness through empirical research. Before him, there was the Framingham study of the 50s where they studied you know, exercise and how it might correlate in later life with health. But Dr. Cooper was truly the first guy to do where the rubber meets the road. Within the Air Force, he got tasked with, for NASA actually, what are the effects of long-term space travel? How do you overcome that with exercise? And so he started doing research and ultimately just kept intriguing him to figure out, can I ultimately prove what I believe to be the truth, which is that exercise improves your health. He got into this research to try to see how much air and oxygen people were taking in when they were exercising. But then he comes up with the term aerobics, and he actually establishes a term that's in the dictionary now. I frequently use the word aerobics, which literally means with air or with oxygen. And the ability of the body to utilize large amounts of oxygen is the real secret to physical fitness. Most of health care was when you're sick come to see us and what Ken said is no before you get sick this is what you should be thinking about so he was on the other side of the fence which is perfect if you're trying to have young healthy guys and you're trying to get them ready to go into combat to meet these incredible demands that they have they should be prepared like Olympic athletes I was working with special services at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Here he was a single doctor, and I wasn't the least bit interested, you know, because there was a lot of different guys to date. And, and so anyway, he asked me out, and, it was, and I don't know, it was just, thought, well, why not, you know. We went to a movie, and I will never forget it. It was The Old Man in the Sea with Spencer Tracy. And for the first time in my life, I just felt a, a, a calmness. I mean, there wasn't someplace else I was looking to go or some party to go to. It was so funny because he, we didn't date very long after that because I was 24 and he was 28. So it all started just kind of quickly. And, uh, but I think the fact that, that I did, I saw in Ken something special. And then it was in 68 when he wrote the first book, Aerobics, and published it, became an international bestseller that all the acclaim and the interest started coming, which opened doors and opportunities for him left and right to say, hey, I'm really onto something here. Not only do I believe in this and the mission, but now I've been provided a material opportunity to go and take this and do something with it. The word leadership, by definition, means that you are ahead of everybody else. And quite often that means new ideas, and quite often new ideas are very controversial. Everybody looks at Ken Cooper today. He's the father of preventive medicine, all sorts of accolades and awards. When he started, he had unbelievable 
resistance, that he persevered and survived and would not give up. When his book first came out in 1968, there was, uh, and I can't remember the, the, the newspaper in New York um, that did a review of his book. And the, and the review came out to be something, it was very negative, and it came out to say something like, Dr. Cooper will kill more people in his approach than Adolf Hitler. The concept of men over the age of 40 running, there were people who said the streets of Dallas are going to be full of corpses. And I said, Ken, do you believe with all your heart that preventive medicine is the medicine of the future? He said, I know it is. And then I said, well, you stay the course. And he did. It's why he left the Air Force, which he liked, but he thought he could do more out of the Air Force than he could in. And, uh, and I think that's true. That was a tremendous um, courage, amount of courage that it took to walk away from being four years away, I believe, from full retirement in the Air Force and the lieutenant colonel probably going to progress and walking away with a five-year-old and a pregnant wife and with not a lot of money just to chase this idea was probably the one of the biggest turning points of his life. When he first set up his practice in Dallas, his thesis was exercise promotes long life and well-being. His clinic is basically a research facility and that's how he started and that's how he supported this whole concept of the value of aerobics. Ken Cooper has changed the lives of so many people including me uh, in terms of just making sure that one of your top priorities is maintaining good health. I shouldn't be here. I was 38 years old and I was 538 pounds. People don't survive. I lost the 300 pounds because he had this place here. If he hadn't opened up this place 40 years ago, then I wouldn't have had a place to come to in 2002. But since he did, and he was supportive of me, and he treated me like a son, all right, I was able to lose the 300 pounds. I was able to find my wife on a blind date from a member here who set me up with her, Kelly. We went on a blind date, we got married, and now we have three beautiful and healthy children. We've had many of our folks go through his program, lose significant amount of weight, stop smoking, uh, just lead much healthier lives. He has changed how the Air Force approaches fitness and a healthy lifestyle, not only for the men and women in uniform, but also for their families. In Brazil, they call jogging the Cooper. You do your Cooper. And, and so he's been able to have an influence, literally, worldwide. And now in China, where he's over lecturing uh, frequently, about the Chinese and transforming over a billion people to a healthier lifestyle. His approach is very practical and very doable. People can relate to that and when you can relate to something you increase the probability that you're going to do it greatly and when you start doing it it makes a big difference in your life. My father is very proud of what he's accomplished work-wise but what I always hear him say that he's most proud of is his family. Even though he's so famous and busy all the time, he always took time out for my brother and I. What we've been able to contribute as a unit, as a family unit, is what he's most proud of. The fact that we're a tight family and we care about each other and we're close uh, and that we all share the same beliefs, that's definitely what he's most proud of. Because if he had accomplished everything in the world with his work, and his family had fallen apart, I know him very well, and I know that he would have been extremely dissatisfied with his life. God blessed me well when I was brought into his life because he's just, he's my mentor. He's my motivator, and just as special as God is, he's, that's how special he is to me. The biggest lesson I've learned from my father, number one, is my faith. Uh, my dad leads his life from faith and instilled that in me and I found it on my own in my own life and I agree with him in that. But beyond that, it's, it's dedication and discipline to what you believe. If you truly believe something and you feel called to do it, then no matter the barriers that come in front of you, you go around them, you go through them, you go over them, but you keep moving forward, you don't quit. At the end of your life, if you've collected a big purse and pile of wealth and money, you can't take it with you. But if you've invested your whole life in improving the lives of others that will live on well beyond you,
there's not much more than that.